Hello again folks, Steve here again with something I'm going to talk today about called Presta Nombre. Well, it's not that I call it that, it's what it's called. It is a word from the Spanish, a compound word, which the first part is presta, which comes from the verb prestar, which means to loan. And nombre means name, of course, right? So it's a loaned name. And if you look it up, do a quick search for it, you'll find it. The definition from the Spanish is, when it's put together, is a person or non-entity whose name is put on a legal document. Hmm, what can we learn from this? Well, as a little bit of a backdrop, as far as I can see, what's happened in the world over the last while, especially over the last couple hundred years, is that it's become socially unacceptable to keep slaves, shall we say, right? There was a time since the dawn of humanity where slave ownership and getting people to work as slaves was the way you took care of business, right? It was part of the way of taking care of business, but this became unacceptable. So it became something we shouldn't be doing. However, this was a big, big problem for the non-productive oligarchs that run the world or purport to run the world because that's their method of doing business. It's always been, right? So they had to come up with a way to make sure that slavery would keep going. And what they found out was that through this whole process, it was considered objectionable to enforce slavery on somebody. However, if somebody accepted their slavery, different story. So what they embarked on was a process I'm going to call Prestanombre, which is to create a legal name onto a non-entity, right? Just like the definition says. And even that word person, when it comes to legal documents, is a non-entity, but we'll get into that later, but for another video maybe. But let's focus on the non-entity one. They created a non-entity. Like it doesn't exist in the real world, it's just a construct, and it's put in. So for example, a driver's license is a non-entity. It has a name on it which exists on a legal document here and in some file somewhere. The legal world, right? But they had to develop these and they were very cunning. They made the name just so happens to be the same as the name on that your mom gave you, right? They spell it slightly different with different capitalizations, but it's the same name physically. Just like you can have a row of John Smiths, but which John Smith, right? So in this case, there is a Steve Maloney, right? There's also a, a man called Steve Maloney. But the trickery through indoctrination from a very young age, parents are inculcated in it, and schools are inculcated in it, they get singing national anthems and patriotism and flag raising and all that sort of stuff so people will say that I am a Canadian. I am a non-entity which has a name in a legal document. I am, I am the Presta Nombre. Now, if people can be dumb enough and we've been dumbed down enough to actually believe that we can then be told that everything that applies to the Presta Nombre applies to us. So all the duties, all the rules, all the taxation, all the bylaws, all of that applies to it. But we never thought to question. It's just a borrowed name. We're just using somebody else's name. It's a borrowed name. Prestar means to borrow or to loan. And if you look at this document right here, it says that this card remains the property of the issuing agency and must be returned, surrendered upon request. If somebody asks me if I have a driver's license, all I have to do is say, look at this, buddy. You tell me. Am I the issuing agent? Do I look like an issuing agent? Then it ain't mine. If it does you any good, here it is. But it ain't mine. Same thing goes for the passport. First page of the passport. 
this passport is the property of the government of Canada. Right there. And in French, also. <laughs> the government of Canada, who knows? That's probably a non-entity as well. It's also a prestanombre. So this is a prestanombre, which is belongs to another prestanombre. So that is the con job that takes place, just for us to wake up to, right? We have to realize that none of it applies to us. However, if we don't want to get our car stolen by a highwayman, we better be carrying one of these borrowed documents, right? If we want to leave the slave colony and go to another slave colony, we better be carrying one of these, permission from the queen. Otherwise, the slave masters aren't going to let us through their farm gates, are they? Not going to happen. That's the con job. Now, the pros of it all are that when we live in a world of madness, of madness, world of madness, we have to fit in and be stealthy in some ways, right? We have to. I don't know how, other, how else we can do it at this point. So here's an example of a story, right? Suppose you are trapped behind the lines of a war, right? You're in the midst of a war zone and you want to get your ass out of there and you want to get your ass out of there alive and intact. And the only thing that you can think of to do, oh, and besides, you're part of a group of people who sought out for extermination or whatever. If the only thing that you can think of to do is to find some dead soldier somewhere, Take all of his clothes off, get dressed up, use the, uh, use the prestanombre, his identifications, his, or his prestanombre identification, his railway passes, his whatever he's got, name badge, whatever, and speak with that accent and the lingo and so on. If that can get you through to safety, then you're using a prestanombre to get to safety for your self-defense. However, you're under no illusion that you are that name. You're not even under any illusion that you are the man from which all that gear came from. No. You know what you're doing. You're woke. You're red-pilled to what's going on. But you're doing it because that's the best thing you see at the moment. And that's the way to look at these things, right? They are instruments of an evil situation. But we're in a world of fucking madness. That's what we're in. Craziness. Where people believe they are these fucking things. People believe it. A family member of mine, uh, not too long ago, and I was telling him about this, he says, no, shut up, Steve, you're a Canadian. I asked him, I said, you know what a Canadian is? What is a Canadian? It's a status within a legal framework. Two guys over there. One says he's Canadian, one says he's not. They're brothers. One was put in an orphanage somewhere else. Can you tell by looking at them? Can you do a test? No. It's made up shit. That's all it is. Made up shit that people put in legal documents and so it's madness by definition it's it's people believe they are what they made up so people are that mad that we have to pretend to be mad but we know we're not right play the game but talk about it Challenge people. How can you be this? If this is what some other dude made. Besides, how can it be yours if it doesn't even belong to you? <laughs> it's not you and it doesn't belong to you. Are you going to say that you are not you and you don't belong to you? Makes no sense, does it? Makes no sense. So, we borrow these things. More than borrow for them, we pay for them. 150 bucks, whatever it is. And 
we get around the best we can. But in so doing, we are free in our hearts. We are freed in our hearts because we see behind the curtain of what's going on. Repress the nombre. Think about it. We can operate through them. We can operate with them. But my question is, or my inkling is, they're not us. See you again. Great chatting. Talk again soon. Bye for now.